Hey there, welcome to the Flute 360 podcast. I'm Dr. Heidi K. Begay, and I'm a flutist, educator, coach, and podcaster. My God given mission is to serve you. I am passionate about guiding you, the modern day flutist, to discover your unique voice on and off the stage. The goal of this podcast is to help you thrive both as an artist and as a musicpreneur. Go ahead and grab some espresso, your favorite notepad, and let's get to it. Today's episode 221 is titled, Is the DMA Even Worth It? Hey, 360 er welcome back. And I am so glad that you are here because I absolutely love connecting with you. So a month ago, I had posted two episodes in regards to audition tips if you were embarking on the journey of pursuing a collegiate or a graduate music degree, whether it was for your BM, MM, or DMA. And since then, because I was in that zone, I was thinking about auditions, I shared recently through Instagram a recent victory story for one of my past students. All last year, she was taking lessons with me. We were doing recording sessions, the whole nine yards, and she was accepted into a DMA program out West. And this fall, 2022, she just started her DMA program with said studio and she's loving it. So because of this, I wanted to share her recent win her recent accomplishment through an Instagram story. And because I did that, it was really interesting. A lot of my Instagram followers replied to that story and asked me, is the DMA even worth it? Woo. (laughs) I really was not expecting that reaction at all, but I completely get it. These questions, your questions are valid. And the reason why I think some flute 360 ers are asking this question is because you realize that the industry and the music market is shifting so much right before our eyes. And I get it. You are asking these questions because at the fundamental level, right, the DMA is a program and a degree that you would want to pursue if you want to teach at the academic level. And since some of these academic positions are starting to slowly slip away, you're wondering and you're asking, is the DMA even worth it for me? Now, my gut reaction to this is only you can answer that for yourself. If you truly are questioning or curious about the DMA program and you want to add it into your career path, then great. I would seek out wise counsel. I would ask these hard questions to your studio lesson teacher or an advisor or people who have pursued the DMA program and make the best decision for yourself. Only you can do that for your life and for your career. So I won't get into the specifics about this past student of mine because that would not be fair, but we did have those conversations in lessons. So that was something that was said and done through the privacy of our own conversations one-on-one about the trajectory of her career and why she was embarking through that DMA program. You need to have these conversations with the right people because they will be able to advise you accordingly, determinate on your goals, your wishes, your hopes, and all of that jazz. And I think it is good for you to be asking these tough questions because you want to take it seriously, right? It is a three to five-year program, give or take, and it's going to cost you an investment. It's going to take time, your energy, sacrifices will be made. And so you want to know, like, is this going to be worth my time? Now, 
for me, the reason why I'm going to share with you my testimony here is because I want you to see how I pursued deciding if the DMA was right for me and for my career. I want to unwrap this package for you so you can see my thought process, the steps that I took, the logic that I had, and hopefully this can transfer over and you can take some or all of these elements and start applying it in your life as well. Now, to each their own, I totally get it. Everyone's path and their personalities and their goals is going to be extremely unique to themselves, right? For me, I was 13 years old and I decided that I was going to be Dr. Heidi one day. And that was because I had such influential teachers at the time who I met through flute summer band camps when I was really young. And they were Brian and Diane. And I absolutely loved how they performed, how they taught, the poise and professionalism that they had. And I knew that I wanted to work with them on some level someday. But at that age, I realized, oh, wow, there were a lot of traits that I absolutely adored about them, but I really loved what they were doing too in their careers. I saw that they were university professors. I saw that they got to teach master classes, go on tours, play at different colleges. And I came to the conclusion that since both of them have a doctoral degree, this probably aided them in order to get such a job. And sure enough, it did, right? So I started talking to the right people and I started pursuing that path at 13 saying, okay, BM, MM, DMA, it's for me. That's what I want to do because I wanted to be a university professor someday. That's the job title that I wanted to hold. So fast forward 20 years later, I obtained all those degrees. I graduated at 33 years old with my DMA and I was ecstatic. Now in 2014, a year before I started my doctoral program, I was driving in South Lake, Texas, I went through a Starbucks drive through and clear as day, I heard God's voice say DMA. And it was more like a whisper. It was very soft and I knew that it was for me. And so instead of just impulsively starting <laughs> to practice the audition rep and applying to the applications, I took some time with my husband and we prayed about it. I called him and I said, hey, you know, this is what happened. This is what I heard. Pray about it for me. Let's pray about it together and see if it's in alignment for us and for our lives. And he said, okay, sure. I would love to do that with you, Heidi. So we did that for about a week or two. And sure enough, we came to the conclusion that yes, this was from God. We heard his voice and we started making the right steps towards that goal. So for 2014 through 2015, I took lessons with Don Bailey, and I absolutely loved that year. I really connected with him as a teacher, as a friend, and as a colleague, and I learned so much from him. Then it came time for DMA auditions. I applied to about four different schools. I chose that Texas Tech was the right fit for me to work with Dr. Lisa Garner-Santa, and so I started my program in 2015. All of this is to say is my advice from me to you is that hearing God's voice, walking with him and being obedient to his will for my life, that was the important factor to all of this. In order for me to make such a decision about investing into a three to five year program, the money, the energy, the time, the sacrifice that I was asking my husband to make leaving his job in Keller, Texas, I knew that I needed God's wisdom. I needed to seek out that wisdom. Now, if you're asking, how do you go about that? Like, 
How do you seek out God's wisdom? How do you hear his voice? My main advice to you is to be in a deep, intimate relationship with him. That means coming to him, declaring that he is Lord of your life, going through scripture, praying, fasting, and really growing your faith like a muscle. And the more you do this, the more that you walk with him in this way, you will be able to discern his voice compared to your own, compared to your own thoughts and wishes. You will be able to see how he's laying out a path for you. And for me, once that whisper came and I prayed about it with my husband, then the steps and the path started becoming clearer. Who would I study with through the audition process? Where would I go to school? Things like that. It started unfolding. Now, I want you to know that that's the initiation, right? But we have to be good stewards of what he puts on our heart. We can't just be lazy about it and say, oh, you know, God will tell me everything. Maybe, but he wants us to take action. He wants us to be doers. So yes, God guided me, but I still had to put in the work. I still talked to the right people. I talked to friends and family members and colleagues whom I could trust with this. I did the research and I meditated on these responses and came to a conclusion that was good for myself and for my husband. So for you and for your life, the reason why I go here, and I know this is not everyone's cup of tea and that's okay. The reason why I go to this spiritual world and tell you what has worked for me is because it's so hard for me to describe the process through secular words. You are embarking and you are considering taking on possibly $60,000, $80,000 of more student loan debt for an advanced degree. You want to take this seriously. And for me, I don't want to advise you and say, oh yeah, just, you know, go for it. And (laughs) whatever happens, happens. No, like you're asking me because you are taking this seriously. And this is the best way I know how to advise you for the people who have been asking me this question. For me to separate God from my daily activities and my world and my decision-making is nonsense. It doesn't compute in my brain. So this is the best way I know how to advise you. Be in scripture, pray about it. And from the secular lens, I'll go ahead and jump over here. You're right. The music industry is shifting. Those academic full-time tenure track jobs really are dwindling away. So going back to me and my career in the DMA, the DMA for me, it was worth it. Now, it did not pan out the way I had anticipated post-graduation. Remember, back to the beginning of this episode, the whole point of me getting that DMA in 13-year-olds, 30-year-olds, Heidi's brain was, I want to teach at the collegiate level. And I got to teach at the collegiate level through an adjunct position for quite some time, but it never panned out yet to be a full-time tenure track position. I did not know that actually me going through the DMA and working on my DMA thesis would produce Flute 360. God works in mysterious ways. I thought in 2018, I was going to start pursuing those academic jobs and I was going to work at the college. But that's not how it panned out. He actually used a part of my DMA program, my DMA thesis, and gave me 360. He gave me a stage to connect with you on and teach and play and meet some phenomenal people along the way. And then that got to be the amplification to a business that wasn't quite formed yet. So you can make plans, right? And I had made those plans, but ultimately 
where God was leading me and directing me is where I wanted to be. And I clearly saw that he wanted me to be on this 360 stage with you and starting my own business, serving my 360 years instead of being in academia for now. And I absolutely love it. I love designing courses. I love doing one-on-one consultation and lessons. It brings me a lot of joy to work with you. Someday academia might be in a future season for me. Who knows? But for now, I can see how the DMA was worth it for me because I was obedient to his will for my life. And so I want the same for you. I want you to seek his will for your life and be obedient to that plan because it will give you an abundance of joy. I hope that this episode has helped you. And if you need further advice or help guiding you through this season of your life, then I would absolutely love to serve you in that way. Feel free to go to my website at HeidiKBegay.com or email me at HeidiKBegay at gmail.com. I am also through the different social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and now I have a TikTok account as well. So my handles through all of those different platforms is at Heidi K. Begay. See you soon. Let's talk about flute.